I mean to the Democrats. Y'all ain't got nobody? 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 Guys, boy, Benny, a question that is often asked in left-wing media is, who radicalized you? They are so worried about people not walking lockstep with woke ideology. They screech and scream and rend their garments whenever there is a countervailing opinion. But ladies and gentlemen, the answer to that question is often holding up a mirror and saying, you, you putting America last. That's the answer to so many of these questions. And you saw it on perfect display last night with a senator from Connecticut. This man's name is Chris Murphy. He's a squishy, goofy little goon of a man, but he does have one very redeeming quality. It's that he said the truth last night, maybe for the first time ever on TV, but he said the truth that the number one priority of the Democrat party is not Americans living here, but in fact, the criminal aliens that they've brought here in order to vote in our elections and in order to drain the coffers dry for our social services and in order to deliver permanent Democrat majorities for them. Listen. The negotiation didn't have a path to citizenship. It was entirely on their terms in order to get Ukraine funding, right? Well, I mean, Chris, that's been a failed play for 20 years. So right. you are right that that has been the Democratic strategy for 30 years, maybe. Uh, and it has failed to deliver for the people we care about most, the undocumented Americans that are in this country. This is the people we care about most. That's what the man said. Sometimes we take things out of context. Sometimes we have to fill in the gaps. We don't have to fill in any gaps here. He just straight up said the people Democrats care about most are the undocumented criminals, the aliens who came here. We don't know who they are, where they come from. They may mean us harm. They may not, but they're criminals and we care about them the most. We don't care about you, no matter who you are living here in America. We need permanent Democrat majorities. So therefore we need to give immediate citizen and voting rights to these people so that they reward us with victories in the election. This message is starting to become very, very poisonous for Democrats as you start to see rappers like 50 Cent saying, um, hey, wait a second, this is the tipping point. 50 Cent posted on Instagram, Trump is the answer. Look at this, taking to Instagram, WTF, call my phone, talking to the uh, mayor of New York. I don't understand how this works. Somebody explain. Maybe Trump is the answer. What was he talking about? He was talking about the prepaid credit cards. Rapper 50 Cent says, maybe Trump's the answer after seeing New York City give prepaid credit cards to criminal migrants. So if you come here illegally, you get free housing, free food, and a credit card funded by you and me. This is also beginning to snap the brains of guys like Stephen Smith. Now, in the question of who radicalized you, the answer for Stephen Smith is the Democrat Party, of whom he is a part of, of whom he is used to be a loyal soldier of. Stephen Smith was the biggest wokester of the woke, big BLM race hoaxer on ESPN. But this man has been radicalized. Stephen Smith is now might as well put on a red MAGA hat. He says Trump is going to win, and he rails against the $53 million pilot program for illegals. Stephen Smith losing his damn mind, talking about, hey, wait a second, we got Americans here in this country. That should be your priority instead of the criminal aliens. Check out this bewildering and shocking clip. You pick and choose. What it came down to for me is this. I see homeless folks in the streets of New York all the time that are American citizens. I damn sure see him in California. We've got poor, impoverished, starving people who were born and raised in this nation. How in the hell do we come up with a 52, $53 million pilot pro program for illegals, but folks who are here legally are born here, we don't have enough for them. Just like we could come up with billions for Ukraine. 
But somehow, some way, we can't fix the homeless problem. I'm down for helping Israel. I'm down for helping address the situations with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, okay? I'm down for helping the Ukrainians and fight North Russia. What about poor and desolate citizens here? How the hell do you print money for foreign countries? But you don't print that money to help eradicate folks that are starving right here in the streets of America. Welcome to America first, by the way. He goes on. Welcome to America first. Put the red MAGA hat on. Who were born and raised here. This is what I'm talking about. And so when you have something like that, what's the one way to eradicate it? Yes, you got to have a flourishing economy. Yes, you can't have inflation. Yes, you can't be on the verge of a recession. Milk don't need to cost $7. Bread don't need to cost $5. Don't get me started with how much sugar cost. You can talk about employment all you want to. You can talk about the labor participation rate. But guess what? If you ain't making no damn money and you got to get two jobs to pay the same prices or to buy the same amount of stuff that you used to buy and the price is higher than it used to be because of inflation, then guess what? What are you really accomplishing? That's why Trump is on the verge of getting elected. Re-elected. <laughs> because when he was in office, there was a flourishing economy. Why does it take a guy like this to actually see the writing on the wall? Stephen A. Smith, I guess if he is anything, He's a man who reads the energy. I suppose that's a great quality if you are a sports commentator. And so Stephen A. Smith is straight up reading the energy saying, you guys have screwed it all up. And now Trump will win again. I don't think Stephen A. Smith wants that to happen, but he certainly doesn't want Biden to win. Here's Donald Trump's uh, official MAGA war room. This is connected to the campaign super PAC. Uh, Tweeting out a Stephen A. Smith clip. What timeline do we live in? Remarkable. Now, the first time that Stephen A. Smith has gone hard against the Democrat Party, specifically Joe Biden, saying Joe Biden is senile. Case of Biden, clearly he doesn't seem to be as cogent and as lucid as we would like him to be. My bigger point was this. It is a disgrace for the Democratic Party to call themselves progressives when they're virtually begging an 82-year-old man at election time to run for re-election. That is the point that I was making. You're supposed to be progressive, right? You're supposed to be moving forward. You're supposed to be thinking forward. You're supposed to be being innovative and younger and all of this other stuff. And you're leaning on the hopes and the prayers of an 82-year-old who would be Joe Biden. He's 80 right now. He'd be going 81. He'll be 82 at the time of re-election if that were to happen. To depend on him is an indictment against the Democratic Party. And the reason I brought up Gavin Newsom is because, listen, I am absolutely positively allergic to the high taxes in California. I can't stand them. To me, the state invents ways to take your money. It's just unbelievable to me. But to watch him sit directly face to face with you, Sean Hannity, and go toe to toe the way that y'all did. So this is what he's talking. He's talking about like what it's like to have a president with a functional brainstem and what it's like to have Joe Biden as president. By the way, like, Joe Biden's not doing a great job, not just with like Democrats, but with anyone. There was a very, very uh, unstable, instable coalition that was sort of formed and cobbled and knit together with duct tape and dental floss by Barack Obama. It's called the Coalition of the Dispossessed. And this was supposed to be the alphabet brigade, right? Black people. Latino people mash them all together and make like this big coalition to vote against the your average standard run of the mill Republican voter. And that coalition is crumbling in real time, the, the absolutely being destroyed by people like Stephen Smith, because people like Stephen Smith are being radical, you know, for lack of a better term. Like saying, wait a second, you actually don't care about me. You don't you only care about the next Democrat voter that you can import here. You don't care about me. You don't care about any America. Make America first, right? Trump leads Biden by two points. Is winning the Hispanic vote and the young vote. Look at these headlines. Trump wipes out Biden's lead with Latino voters in 2024. Insanity. Donald Trump is winning with Latinos. 
look at that. Biden's approval rating is at 28%. That's unsustainable. Black and Hispanic voters deserting Democrat Party in large numbers. This is the end. Trump indictments spark wave of new endorsements from rappers. <laughs> because, of course, ladies and gentlemen, rappers are getting Trump's face tattooed on their legs. <laughs> His little pump, right? Yeah. So how are you going to beat that energy? Well, you're not. You, it's not that this isn't me like doing happy talk. This is me straight up saying, why don't you go into a black barbershop and ask? MSNBC did. They didn't like the answer. Some people in your orbit who are either voting for Donald Trump or considering it? For sure. A lot of my friends are obviously my age, so we're a little younger. <laughs> We've only voted once, you know, for actually for a president. And Trump is kind of all we know. And they're kind of Trump and Biden. They're like, well, we were broke with Biden. We weren't with Trump. And that's kind of the only thing that I'm hearing over and over again, over and over yeah. again, is that, well, Trump, we had money. Well, Trump, we had money. But let me tell you what, with Joe Biden, you could potentially get an award for your favorite rapper, LJ Cool LLJJ. You hear? The great artists of our time representing the groundbreaking legacy of hip hop in America. LLJ Cool J. Uh, by the way, that boy's got, he got, that man's got biceps bigger than my thighs. I think he's been an MC. Oh my God. Oh my God. That boy. Oh. Oh. I have secondary and tertiary cringe for Joe Biden. Like, imagine being a supporter of Joe Biden. Can you think of anything more lame than being a supporter of Joe Biden? Stephen A. Smith can't. Isn't that shocking? Stephen A. Smith can't. Wow. And it's all because Democrats have straight up told him and everyone else in the world who their real priorities are. Undocumented criminal aliens. Yeah, baby. See how that works for you. So, bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. It's your boy, Benny. Like, share, and subscribe. See you.